So hello friends, welcome to the live stream. Today I will render an X-Wing on the uh, emulator from uh, David Marys, the 8-bit guys, Commander X16. For those who don't know, the uh, X Commander X16 is a new 8-bit computer which is done with modern parts. The goal is to build a computer which gives the feeling of the past from the 80s with uh, modern technology. Some of you may know I wrote a 3D renderer for the Commodore Plus 4 and the renderer is written in BASIC and the Commander X16 BASIC is very similar to the BASIC of the Commodore Plus 4, Commodore 3.5 BASIC. I went into the effort to port this code onto the Commander X16. And let's find out how the render will look at the end. So first of all, I have to copy the code into the Commander. Nice name, by the way, Commander. So this is the code. Copy and paste into the emulator. I make a direct stream from the uh, from the window of the emulator. The emulator has started by its own and loads the vertices into the memory. Okay, so let me check a few things here. So in the first pass, in the first uh, phase, the emulator loads the vertices. And now we have a few options here. We can rotate the model. The model is uh, displayed in dots and points here. This has performance reasons and I can, we have the, the three axes here. This is the Y axis, the X axis and in the depth, you can imagine this line here. This is the Z axis. So you can here, if I press the uh, Y key, okay, I have a German keyboard, so I have to Press the Z key for the Y. So if I press the Y key, I can rotate the model. And the and this this is the axis. Over this axis, I can rotate it. When I put here, let's say 180, then we will have, I guess, the front view of the X-wing. And that's the case. You see here. I hope you can imagine this. Uh, imagine a next wing, and this is the front view. This is the nose, and these are the wings. You see, it takes a while, but that's a part of the fun. Uh, slow things a little down to see how the program works. So the front view is a little boring. We will go again to the quarter view and we will zoom the model a little in so that it fills nicely the screen. So I hope you can imagine this. This is the nose here and here we have the four wings of an X-Wing. An X-Wing on a Commander X-16. Okay, if you see this uh, exclamation mark, then the pass is finished. So I built in a 
the zoom function first we will center the, the model with the end key so it passes all the uh, vertices here the one thousand uh, the one thousand eight to three vertices and finds the um, and uh, tries to position the model in that way that the spaces here are equal. Okay, so let's draw this again. So when this is drawn, we will zoom the model in so that fills out the screen. The Commander X16, X16 has a screen resolution of 320 horizontal per 240. These are 40 pixels more than a Commodore Plus 4 and 64. So okay, now we press the uh, auto zoom here. And you can see here the model fills out the screen a little better. And in a moment, I will start the render. So it's nice. It's very nice to work with this computer. It's fast enough, I think. So we press L. So on this face, the program tries to find the visible faces. Visible faces is the faces that we can see. This model contains of uh, polygons, also called faces. And in this case, it, this, uh, the polygons are not triangles. Normally, if you have a modern 3D engine, every model is uh, put together of triangles because you can calculate better with triangles. But in this um, small resolution that the commander x16 has or let's say the Com uh, commodore plus four which is the platform that i originally wrote the engine if we if we uh, make every face of triangles the model uh, the end result will look too meshy too many lines on this small resolution you can see here how thick a line is this is one pixel by the way so now the program has found the visible faces 307 of 1000 and a few i think 1036 or so and now we will sort all found faces all found visible faces in Z order. Z order means we will sort them uh, from the back to the beginning. What this means, we will see in a, in a moment. This is called the painter's algorithm. And uh, painters, because every painter, if he wants to try to paint a landscape, he First uh, starts with the background and then layer by layer he adds the objects which are closer to the viewer and this is exactly what this program does um, now that we have found the visible faces he, he tries to uh, paint the, the polygons which are the farthest away uh, these are the uh, engines here there's a part of the wing and works its way to the front. With a little imagination, you can uh, follow the process. It's a little, I, I know it's a little difficult when you see this uh, the first time, uh, but it's not impossible. 
So. Well, this is a live stream, so if I make mistakes in my talking here, yeah, pronunciations, I'm not a native uh, English speaker, but I try my best because I love the, uh, the English language. I speak three languages. I speak uh, Greek, Kalimera, Kalispera, Seolus. I speak German. Guten Abend an alle. Willkommen zu meinem Livestream. And I speak, uh, try to speak English, the international language. Hello, friends. Welcome to my live stream. So, the beauty of this uh, program is that you can literally see how this works. And many people ask me, not many, a few, why don't you write this code uh, in assembly? And my answer is, and I said this, I've said this uh, in some of my videos, my answer is simply because I like programming in basic. I'm not good in assembly and writing the program basic originally on the Commodore Plus 4 enables me now to port the program to the Commander X16 and to future machines, basic machines, which are popping uh, out lately, like the, uh, let me think, was the one from England, uh, Acorn, no. something with A, uh, or many others here, yeah, Raspberry Pis, even the, uh, the PlayStation 2 has a basic program because they tried back in the day to market it, to market the machine, the PlayStation 2 as home computer to pay lower taxes. So the render is finished now and it came out really well. See, that's, um, yeah, here you can see why I, I've chosen polygons, mainly here uh, these um, polygons with four edges and uh, with four uh, vertices. Because if this were triangles, we had here additional lines and the model wouldn't look as good as, as now, I think. I've chosen um, a very low poly model because the, uh, the difference to the Commodore Plus 4 is that the Commander X16 has half of the memory free for BASIC. That is about 30 kilobytes. And the Commodore Plus 4 has 60 kilobytes free memory. And which makes the Commodore Plus 4 basic very, uh, very cool and very good, in my opinion. Can uh, stop the program and go through the listing. Okay. Okay, we have a memory overflow here. Yeah? Let's see. Let's see, I'm new. Okay. So, let's try another thing. So, new. See, let's clear the screen. And now I pasted it directly from the, from the editor. So, here you can see the, the line numbers. Screen mode 80. Means that we go into the iris mode. You can set here the column, the colors. Five is here green. CLS stands for clear the screen. Very similar to uh, the Commodore Basics. I don't, I don't uh, know if the Commodore 64 has these commands here. Color definitely not. But the Commodore Plus 4 has a similar command. And here the goes up is uh, initialization where I make, where I clear the screen and make it black because 
if you set the color and clear the screen, let's say you set the color, the background, background color black, and you and when the com commander x16 starts with a blue screen, and you make a CLS here, the um, the the background turns not black, so you have to draw lines here, every line in with black color so that you get a black screen. Here are some variables for initialization. These are the initial uh, core, uh, variable um, degrees, 10 degrees on the x axis, 10 degrees on the y axis and 10 degrees on the z axis. And you have here, this is a uh, variable for the pi, a pi constant, 3.1.1.415 and so on. So, but this is here the interesting part. This here. So why I deleted the spaces? It's very simple. You can the uh, the code and the model data share the same memory and the code is written in ascii characters and every ascii character um, needs eight one byte even the even the spaces here um, and if you make the code compact you save a little space, not much, but a little space for the model data. So how can how can we read sequential files? Sequential files are basically text files. If you is sequential files are files on a physical media, let's say the uh, floppy drive or a disk drive. And if you open this file with a text editor and the file contains only numbers, you can read it. So uh, this line here, line 60, uh, this, is, uh, this is how it's done. How you, uh, the, the procedure is you open the file, uh, the file has the name vertex.seq for sequential. And then, because there are many file types, you have binary files, you have sequential files. This is sequential. You, can, you uh, tell the, the command here open that we want to open a sequential file with the name vertex point sequential type and then read or write. We want to read it. We don't want to write in the sequential file we want to read it and which took a, a little to find out how to do it on the commander x16 is this 2 a comma 8 comma 2 and this is a little different on the commodore uh, plus 4 where you usually <coughs> uh, i think it's 8 comma 1 comma 8 uh, i can look it up I hope I find it. But it doesn't matter. It's different. No. And it was not documented in the early em emulators. And uh, it didn't work from the mounted um, directory. You had to have an SD image. And well, you had to have an SD image, and you <clears throat> this was not documented in the first emulated emulators, but I found it out in the forums, and this is how it's done. So this input is like a read command. You have this input, and then this uh, sharp character uh, with the two. We opened, I think, this logical drive two. And then you can, uh, it's in the sequential file contains comma separated values. Each line has four numbers, comma separated. So if you open the file, 
we read the first line and write the numbers into the, vari into the variables C, D, H and U. Yeah. So we read the first, the first line and write the vari uh, read the first four numbers in the line, which are comma separated, and write them. Let me see. Ah, we use the U for dimension dimension the arrows here. Well, dim is a dimension. We dim U. Let me see if I can, yes, dim u and dim sl, these are, I know, well I guess if you're watching this video you already know about basic, but dim, with dim u you can um, uh, initialize arrays, you can say I want an array, oh I think I have forgotten here, dim u yeah. i've forgotten the u oh i deleted it so u so i have an array with a name u and this has let's say i dimension it with uh, the the value of u let's say if u is 100 then i have an array with a length of 100 and SL the same. We unfortunately this type of basic, this old basic, uh, does, doesn't have um, uh, dynamic arrays, or you cannot redimension the arrays during the uh, while the program is running. So you have to define the fixed length at the beginning. If you don't do this, you can run into overflows. So this uh this is x uh, x and this character here I don't know how it's called in English Pro percent percent yes uh, percent I think are integers and if you don't have this percent uh, the it defines the value type of the of the values which are hold in the array no? and x y and z i think this integer all coordinates are, in, uh, are integer values so integer has i think two bytes maybe i'm wrong i don't know and if you have real uh, comma separated uh, real uh, numbers then you waste five bytes yeah. so this is done to save memory and as you can see here i dimensioned here some uh, arrays here at the beginning and this here runs in a loop the first line is the first line of the sequential file as the information for the dimensioning for initialization of the arrays and then the following lines you can see here i have i go here into a for loop into a loop okay so here i close well i go in the for loop and i know how many lines i have C, no? C is read is read here at the first line of the sequential file. So I go the the steps here on from one to C and make another input. And you can see here I have I reference here the uh, array, and these are the vertices of the model. No? X vertices, X coordinate the x part of the coordinate from one from vertice a uh, a runs from uh, one to c let's say a is one the first vertice vertice the first vertex which is a 
uh, a tuple of values. So let's say top tuple tuple in English is a vector uh, of three components: no? x part, y part, and z part. And I load every vertex in the into the memory. I hold the vertices in the men memory so that you can that I can rotate, translate, zoom, and so on. Do all these operations within the computer. And let me see here. Okay, I won't go here through all the code, it's just uh, some informations. Okay, here's the next part. If you have a for loop, you have to do a next. Normally you say the next A, but it's not necessary. And when you are finished with reading, you can close. You have to close the sequential file and you are done. You put uh, data which uh, was stored on physical media into the memory. Yeah? And that's, this is how it's done with sequential files in BASIC. Okay. So. so, this is the menu part, the part where I press the keys and you could uh, um you could change the degree the angles uh, and on the commander x16 you have to make this end loss uh, this uh this loop this go to loop uh, you you uh, call this function you get a string which uh, reads the uh, last pressed key uh, so if i press x and the, co the program is at this, uh, this position here. It will write an X in this A string. Uh, this is a string uh, variable. This the dollar sign uh, marks the variable as a string. So this will have uh, an X. And I and if I have if I haven't pressed, so you can uh, you have to read this this like this here. And we have here uh, go to to 220 which is the same line and if i don't press a key so when i don't press a key these the variable is empty when this thing is empty then i go to the beginning of the line so i'm in a end loss in an um oh my english uh, it's in a loop which never ends okay so the moment i press a key I don't, uh, this condition here doesn't apply and I can go further, 230. So if this is an X, then do this. If the A string is an X, then go to the subroutine at the line 3000. 200, uh, which is, I think, I position the cursor at the top and then I print this here, the angle x, or angle axis, which means give, uh, make an input of the angle of the x coordinate, uh, of the x, of the angle of the, on the x plane. Uh, well, I can demonstrate it. Okay, new. So we will copy the program. Very basic stuff, but I think um, if you're in the same age like me, you have fun at these things here. So this is the loading part, which I showed before. Hmm? The sequential file holds 1,083 vertices. So it draws the vertices. And I can uh, interrupt this 
if I want. I press it. I press the X key. Well, I let it uh, run through until we see the uh, exclamation mark. Okay. So angle X. This is what I showed, and now I can this. Uh, I think uh, ten degrees. Okay, this will tilt the model in this direction here. One in this direction. So this is tilted down ten degrees. I will put it at ninety degrees. So it. So this uh, the X wing will face down. Oh, you can see it. Well, here's the nose. Here are the wings. Here's the engines. So you can you you have to have a little imagination when you use this program. But I think that's that's a cool part of it. It's not uh, a streamlined computer. It uh, uses. Uh, uh, it's uh, written on the edge what the what you can barely do on this thing and this is the most fun for me okay so if I put it on so let's see the x let's put the x coordinate again to 10. Let's put it to zero. Uh, let's play a little around. So that's now the tilt of the uh, of the body is zero degrees. Here you have the nose. Uh, we have here an angle of I think one hundred and ninety. And here are the here are the the wings. Now we can position the X-wing so that it faces towards us. I will, uh, okay, Y-axis is here, 195. When I put 180, the nose will be here at the middle. Okay. So now the, the X-Wing flies towards us here. And I can make... Okay, let's uh, make following. I will put the uh, X-coordinate to 90 degree to so yes I don't I don't know if this is not the bottom or the upper part but we will find out when we render the model so let us first go a little down with the, the zoom so let's go this is zoom um, M key huh? let's go a little down okay so the pixels the last pixels are not over the edge here yeah that's good fills out the screen and let's render it and let's see what's what's the result Okay, program runs. Let's take a look at the chat. Okay, ah, second or oh, three. I don't know how many people are watching. Two or three. I will give an hi on the on the chat. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining.
Okay, I see we have a delay here. Yeah? Oh, we have a quiet. Heavy delay, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see at the first glance that we have a small error. Some faces are not recognized as visible. But anyway, it's uh, this program is programmed for fun. And uh, first it's programmed for fun. Second, it's programmed because it's a challenge. And third, it's programmed because I was in a lockdown in the pandemic. And this project here was always a dream of mine because in the 80s I was watching the TV show Battlestar Galactica. Uh, many of you will remember it. And they had this cool green wireframe graphics, which I tried to replicate back then on my Commodore Plus 4. And that's why these are green no? and the lines are green because I really like uh, that graphics which are, were done on a Tektronics and there is a um, another YouTuber Monty McGraw Monty McGraw? Yes, I think who has a channel uh, Monty McGraw I think it's uh, the name where he does demonstrations on his uh, Tektronics, which were basic machines like this year, but very, very expensive. And the memory, the graphics memory was the tube on this machine. It had a, a tube storage memory, something like that, so that it, does, it didn't have uh, the machine, the Tektronics, doesn't have screen memory but when you draw a line on the screen the screen stores the line it has a layer of phosphor and now here you can see what I mean so this is the bottom as it seems yes this is the bottom and I don't know why we have we have a bug it should have recognized this face here okay now it throws the the second pair of wings uh, very cool yeah, very cool we will make different angles today if you like of course So, oh, finished. Okay, you can see here the per the, the renderer is not perfect. Oh, I forgot this line here. For whatever reason, now we will make a side view. So I think the bug may be when you run the renders a third, second or third time. But um, this uh, results in a bug, but I'm not sure. And I have no time at the moment to debug it. But let's do another view, a side view. Let's do a side view. Okay. So, we put the... 
y coordinate to 90. So we no, not ninety. We put the x coordinate to zero. Let's let's do ninety. Of the x coordinate to zero. So now we have the side view. So here's the nose, here's the, the top of the X-wing, the other top, here are the engines, and this must be the cockpit here. Let's render, let's see. Yep. As I said, maybe we have another bug, but it's okay. No, uh, there is no software without bugs. I can say this from my own experience because my profession is a programmer, a software developer, which I am doing for about 35 years or so. And I've done a lot of projects and I can definitely say no no software is without bugs. It's only uh, the thing has to be that the software has to uh, fulfill the needs of the users. Okay, now it draws the and we have a quantity error. Okay. So let us read the values first. 160. Ach, okay. Okay. Oh, this is not very, very fast. List to until 100. So I need this values here. GX, GY, GZ. Comma, GY. Comma. That okay, zero, ninety, one hundred and eighty. Okay, let's try it again. We make a new we reset the memory and so there is a possibility that if we run the renderer a few times that we get an overflow so i like to restart the program and the cool thing is that this is an 8 megahertz machine and you can do this in real time without putting the emulator in a warp mode like i usually do on the commodore Plus four. It's fast enough. Okay, let's wait until the vertices are loaded. Okay. X was zero. Uh -huh. Y were ninety. And the others one okay. Okay, maybe. Okay, let's put the 
zoom factor a little down 14 Yes, that's yes, 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 yes. I think that's that was a problem. What I think is that if you draw lines and the coordinates are out of the screen uh, area, we can uh, we get a we get a, an overflow error. So I will go. I can I I can't see now here where the screen ends. Well, I guess here, I don't know. Well, I will put the, uh, the scaling a little down again. Doesn't matter. So that we are on the safe side. On the, Com on the Commodore Plus 4, if you draw a line and let's say you can put the coordinates uh, the, the maximum is 319 and if you set the y coordinate to 350 let's say it won't get an error but on this machine you will get an error yeah and this is i think why we we jumped out the program that's my theory i don't know but i put the program by the way on on several systems well, VIC-20, plus 4, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, DOS, Q QBASIC, Atari ST, uh, in two different the basic dialects. So the one was uh, GF basic and the other was Omicron basic. Then uh, Amiga, Amos, uh, some exotic, Apple, Apple uh, two, and Apple Macintosh. Macintosh was very uh, difficult because it had a buzzy, buggy compiler. A buggy inter interpreter, basic interpreter from Microsoft, mm. and some other exotic which I can't remember yet. I have to do a list. I have to do a list and make a repository somewhere, the GitHub, so that other people can uh, enjoy this program too, if they are interested, of course. So the program ran through, as I said, uh, it, the zoom factor was too high so that if you, when the basic here draws a line, you can you go to, into an overflow. Uh, and some basic dialects uh, have no problem with it, but in this case we have a problem. And this is a nice side view. Let's do for at last action uh, here a nice view okay let's put the x angle to 10 And the y coordinate, okay, this is 90, we put it to 60. So this will rotate the nose in this direction to the back. Okay, let's see. So that we will see the spacecraft from the back ah nice angle yeah why not why not okay i 
think this is a good we can rotate it a little further in this direction let's say 50 so that you can see a little more of the back Okay, now we I will uh, start the auto, auto center function. I hope there is no bug. So that will have the effect that the model is drawn in the center here. I know it takes a little while, but I I have fun with it. I like spending my time on these old machines doing 3D graphics oh okay it centered the model so we can uh, also try the experimental function to scale it to scale it uh, in that way that we have the maximum size here which fills out the screen Let's okay. Let's try it. Why not? Okay, twenty. Okay, but I will go the safe way. I will go on. We'll go 19 to be safe otherwise we uh, we could run into an exception again into an overflow and that would be not so nice okay I'm looking forward to it okay so it tries to find the faces the visible faces maybe you can uh, recognize it here's the nose here we have the upper wing down wing left wing right wing and here are the engines and here's the cockpit Okay, so let's hope that we don't run in an overflow here because it doesn't matter the amount of faces which are found, but we are lucky. So this means 273 visible faces of 1000 and something faces overall were found now it's sorted sort algorithm is uh, shell shell sort yes shell sort first i used bubble sort and that took many minutes maybe in half an hour to sort all the faces because you sort uh, three arrays here per coordinate per component of the uh, vector so you have an uh, array for the x coordinate for the y and for the z for the z part of each coordinate a 3d coordinate
but I plan a video if you are interested to go through the engine to demonstrate what the, th the theory is behind the uh, this Pandas algorithm. You know the um, basic of the Commodore of the Commander and the Commodore Plus Four has not a polygon function, which means that you can uh, put the coordinates and basic draws your function. So you have to write your own polygon function, and in this case, I had to write a polygon function which uh, fills out the faces. No? This is not flat fill here. Yeah? This goes really if you draw a polygon here, like this here, you have to do a scan line procedure. So you draw first the, uh, the, the polygon and then you scan every line and blank. You, you, you draw a polygon with green and then within the polygon you blank out, you fill out the the space no? with the lines and that took a while to implement it in basic well i had to find algorithms on the internet for c sharp let's say and the, the way i did it is i implemented the functions in c sharp so that i know that they worked and then i did it in basic Oh, very nice. Looks really cool. Really? Better than I expected. Oh. Uh, the beauty of this program is that you can actually see how this works. If you want to take your time to watch this the kind of things. So that's our last render for today. I hope you liked the stream. Very spontaneous. And I'm missing five followers, I think, to complete the 500. And when I complete the 500, I will make a special celebration video. For, as a thank you for the 500 so friends that's it George here and thank you for watching as always and thank you for your support and have a nice day or a nice evening like me here and uh, I wish I wish you a nice time and see you in the next one bye bye